Hey, what's up everybody? We're gonna get the show started. What's up everybody? Welcome back to another 3D Hangouts. We're back. My name is Noah Ruiz. I'm a designer here at Adafruit and joining me every week is... What's going on everybody? I'm Pedro Rose, creative tech here at Adafruit and every week we come to share 3D printing projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. That is right. This is the show where we combine 3D printing and DIY electronics to make inspirational projects. What's up everybody? Welcome to the show. We were out last week but we're back this week we're gonna kick off the show with this week's coupon code today. The coupon code is IOTBOX, which will get you 10% off your order. So if you wanna pick up anything in the Adafruit shop, please do so and use the coupon code IOTBOX. Welcome everybody in the chat room. We wanna give some quick shout outs while we take a look um, at all the links and things that we have loaded for you folks. Shout out to everybody in the chat room. We have John K, we have Hector, we have Matable, we have 3D Drengen. Charles. Hello everybody. Thank you so much for joining us this week, today. Uh, we are hanging out in all of the different chat rooms. If you want to hit, hit us up after the shows, we'll be in the Discord chat room. So check out discord.gg slash Adafruit. Let's go and walk through some of the things. We have some free deals going on right now. If you go to adafruit.com slash free, you see all the deals that are going on for $2.99 or more. Orders that are $2.99 or more. You get a free Circuit Player and Express, the half size from Proto, and some free shipping for uh, the US Continental in this area here. So check out adafruit.com slash free for all those things. Same, same day delivery here in New York City. Uh, we're not in New York City, but we will maybe later in September. Um, same day delivery is happening in New York City, so check out that deal if you're in New York and want to get your stuff like right away. You can do so. There's an option for that. Circuit Python meetings happen every Monday at 2 p.m. This is where you get a chance to listen in on um, the core devs, what they're working on, and people in the community that are contributing and working on Circuit Python code plus community. I'm on fire right now. You need to put me out. Keep going. Adafruitdaily.com. <laughs> you can Fume do. Adafruitdaily.com. Get your daily dose of Adafruit stuff. This is like more uh, news from the community, projects, all that sort of stuff is from Adafruitdaily.com. You have to you have to sign into that one. This one is Adafruit.com/newsletter. This is a product focus once a week new new newsletter. Adafruit.com/newsletter. If you want to check that out. All right, we are still in Discord chat room. We haven't left. We're not going anywhere, so we're chilling out in there. If you guys want to sh hang out, we'll take a look at some show that the Show and Tell channel later in the show um, to see what folks are working on. Yep. Periodically, yeah. hang out in the 3D printing channel. 
offered some help on some diffusion filament suggestions oh, on there earlier today. So yeah. definitely join us in there. You can add us if you have any questions. Yeah, we have like segments that we can just like link to and be like, hey, look at this, us chatting That's for five did, minutes. Yeah, That's exactly sweet. what I did. Let's go ahead and take a look at this week's super awesome project or did we cover all of the... We covered all of the things. Let's things. jump right into this week's project, which is coming out very, very soon. So let's take a look at this is this week's project. It is a 3D printed mailbox, internet connected mailbox. So this is a 3D printed mailbox and the thing is, whenever I get an email, the flag is going to come up there. So Pedro, if Pedro wants to write me an email, um, we can test this out. So uh, what we have is inside, we have a micro servo, which is uh, controlling the arm, the little flag. So whenever I uh, receive an email to my Gmail account, um, this gets triggered, right? So what's actually inside there? What's the microcontroller? It is an ESP8266, the Feather Huzzah is inside there so it is connecting to the internet and it is hooked up to Adafruit IO which is our Internet of Things service that is free for makers and uh, we also have a paid tier for uh, pro users that want to have a lot of data and a lot of feeds however this one you can totally uh, build using the free account so that is the project uh, in the back here we have uh, access to the micro USB port so we can um, reprogram or if you wanted this to be battery powered like I do, you can throw a battery, a LiPo um, on the JST connector there for the ESP, and then um, you can have this battery operated, which is what I have here. It'll last about 10 or so hours, because um, I'm gonna the, send the email it does, right now. Yeah, you can send me the email right now. Uh, Ekin or Ekin Ruiz, yeah. There you go. All right, let's see how fast it is. I just hit yeah. send. So there is a little bit of a delay since this is using the if this, then that applet. Um, it takes a little bit sometimes for if this and that to uh, to receive it and pull it in. Uh, but periodically, uh, I've been getting emails all morning and it's been going up and on mm -hmm. uh, pretty instantaneously for the most part. You'll probably hear it in the background all Yeah, you'll probably hear it in the, the background show. throughout the show. But uh, yeah, 3D printed stand. Um, it's a snap fit design. There's also some screws and things to kind of um, to kind of mount this little dowel here. This is just a, me uh, a wooden dowel that I have serving as a stand. But you don't need the stand necessarily if you don't want. Pretty interesting design. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into the guide and talk about the, uh, what is forthcoming on the Adafruit Learning System. So this guide is in review. It will be published later today. Mm -hmm. um, so the, we got a nice little video that we released today. It's like a minute long video of just uh, showing the project working and, and uh, building it really quick. Um, but for the most part, all you need to build this project is an ESP8266 and a sub micro servo. The ESP8266, you want to get the one with the loose headers. That way you can wire into the, uh, into the pins a lot easier. And boy, is this board cheap. It's only $16.95. And that includes all the awesome stuff that a feather does include like the onboard LiPo charging and the onboard uh, voltage regulator, um, which is really nice. And you have all these GPIO pins and stuff like that for only $16.95. That's a pretty good deal. The ESPs are really cheap. Uh, so those are all the things that you need. We've got some tools listed as well. More importantly though, the hardware that you'll need for this, you definitely want to get the appropriate sized screws, the appropriate lengths, and the appropriate type of screw as well, because you will have some differentiation in the flat heads versus the pan heads, but they're all metric. They're all metric, um, and I have them all linked here. And I tell you where uh, these things go. For example, the micro servo likes M2 screws, rather lengthy screws at 12 millimeters. So if you're not sure which screws you need, uh, they're all listed here in the guide, the home page, the introduction page. All right, let's jump into 3D printing the mailbox. Up, oh, it just happened. I got an email. <laughs> it took a little bit, but hey, it worked. Um, again, there's, um, it depends on the if this, then that mm -hmm. um, servers, if they're getting hammered or not. But for the most part, it's been pretty instantaneous. Uh, so back over to the learning guide. Here's all the parts that you'll need to 3D print. Um, pretty simple parts, no supports needed for them. They all print really well on an FDM style 3D printer. Um, there's also a little bit of a sticker action going on here. This is a little Adafruit IO sticker that I cut on our pre-cut uh, vinyl cutting machine over there. It's like a little sticker using regular vinyl that has a sticky backing and then you can stick that onto anything um, that you want. So for prints, 
if you uh, want to get some really nice detail in your projects, I recommend getting yourself a vinyl cutter. They're so nice and so, uh, so high quality and uh, fairly affordable. So uh, this is the Adafruit IO logo. This is all just cut out of vinyl and then stuck on here with some transfer paper. So that looks really, really clean and popping. You couldn't really make that detail on a 3D printer, the FDM style anyway. On the back here, I got our little mascot, our IOT mascot. His name is Nimbus. He uh, likes to uh, keep your data safe, if I could focus on him. So he's just one piece um, sticker that gets stuck on there with final cutter, same action. But you get some really intricate details here. Oh man, come on, focus, please. Mm -hmm. I really want to show that bolt, that lightning bolt in the center of his um, heart there. There you go, look at that. Pretty good, pretty decent uh, quality you get here on the, uh, the good old vinyl cutters. So anyway, that's vinyl cutter action. Thought I'd throw that in there. The SVG file is available to download. So when it comes to slicing this for your 3D printer, what we're gonna start doing is showing a little screenshot of how the parts are oriented on the bed of your slicer. So in this case, you can see how the parts are oriented and you can see that uh, the, the kind of case is actually prints up ways flat on that bottom there. So that's why we are starting to do that. Another great way to showcase how to uh, assemble everything is with the little CAD animation. So we put together a little CAD animation of the uh, parts exploding and it kind of shows you how the pieces uh, fit together. All the STLs and source files are available to download. They're on GitHub. This includes the step file for the entire assembly. It also includes the huzzah and the microservice. If you want to just use those components standalone, you can do so. Or you can check out our CADS parts and GitHub repo, which is a separate link. It's just standalone GitHub um, repo of all of our CAD files broken out in their individual components. Uh, but you can also get the STL files on Thingiverse. Uh, which we'll be publishing as soon as the guide is live. So when it comes to post-processing the parts, there isn't much uh, post-processing other than tapping your mounting holes. Tapping your mounting holes with a tap. A tap is a little kind of a drill bit that has coarse edges that allows you to create threads in cylindrical objects, cylindrical holes, in this case, the standoffs that we have set up. So if you take a look at this photo here, See if we can make it bigger. If you click on any of the photos in the learning guide, you can make them really big. Original size is like 5K, which is pretty massive. Let's go ahead and zoom in on that. You can really get a good look and sense of how, uh, how much material you're actually pulling out when you're using a tap. So you can see here that the, the threads um, have these little channels to allow the excess material to kind of scoop up into the, into the tapping bit. Uh, so I definitely recommend getting yourself uh, some tapping bits. This is the M25. Also, you want to use the M2 for the sub micro servo. Let's go back over here and you can see that um, I did have to use uh, a tapping tool on the case itself for the M2 screws that we'll use to secure the micro servo, the sub micro servo. I also want to do that to the, the plate um, where the flag gets mounted to um, and then um, you can install those. So tapping tools, um, Really, really nice. Um, you can get them from Albany County Fasteners or Amazon, wherever you like to get your tapping tools or your hardware, uh, you can get those there. I don't think they'll, you'll find one at your local hardware shop though, uh, although I could be wrong, because these, these are metric and they're pretty small, they're like baby taps. Speaking of which, um, uh, the, the taps normally don't come with handles. So what you have to do is you kind of have to either make your own handle or find your own handle. So that's what I did. Um, I made some of my own tapping handles. Uh, this one is uh, 3D printed on our little machine here. And uh, the thing with these tapping bits is that they have a square end here. The square end is what kind of keys uh, so that it doesn't strip when you insert it. And that is an M2 by 0 0.4, which is the, uh, the pitch threading for the pitch. So there's a hole in there, the circular hole. And then deep inside there, and deep inside the hole is a square uh, hole that allows this to kind of key in there and get slotted in and doesn't, uh, it doesn't, uh, what do you call it? It doesn't strip when you're, uh, when you're doing this number here. So, uh, pretty cool. I'll probably put these up on Thingiverse. This is an M2 style tap. I also want to create one for my M25 tap, which does have a different shank diameter. Uh, and another thing is I, I'm a drummer, so I got my, um, I got my little drum key here. 
you, this is a way for drummers to kind of quickly tighten up their, uh, their skins. Um, so what I want to do is I want to make an adapter to adapt this little guy to this guy, doing something like that. So this end here has a little square uh, key that gets fitted in there. It locks in like that. And then you can key this in as well and unlock that into place there. Now you have your little uh, drum key adapter for tapping bits, which is pretty nice. And uh, these were printed in uh, Protopasta's PLA. They're pink metal uh, flaky glitter uh, PLA, which I can't get the focus. But anyway, little tip there. If you uh, don't have uh, tapping tools, definitely recommend getting them as they will save your parts from being broken. <laughs> Another thing uh, at the end here, we're doing a quick little dry fit test. Whenever you print your parts out, it's always important to do a, a quick little dry fit test to make sure that everything fits. Uh, and if you need to sand anything down. Putting it all together, this is where we're going to talk about wiring up the servo to the Huzzah ESP82. Pretty simple, you just got three connections, you got the voltage, you got ground, and you have uh, one of the GPIO pins. In this case, it's pin number 14. Uh, we also link to some jumper cables if you guys want to just use those, you won't have to solder it. So uh, installing it to the, installing the Huzzah to the bottom is fairly simple. You just need uh, some four uh, machine screws. Those get um, laid on top of the standoffs and just kind of get fitted in place. Servo gets uh, fitted through the case. There's a nice little kind of cylindrical opening for the shaft to kind of stick out of. And then these standoffs here are actually printed with uh, drafted angles so that they print without any supports. Uh, to secure the flag, all you need to do is uh, kind of take one of the screws that, it, that your servo comes with and one of the servo horns that it comes with and just glue that to the flag. And then you can mount your uh, servo horn to the shaft of the, of the servo, the micro servo and then just secure it in place with the screw. You will have to kind of periodically change it up a little bit so that, or fit it, reposition it, configure it so that you know uh, that the flag is indeed pointed in the right direction when it's up and when it's down. So you have to kind of play with that. I actually made like, uh, Brent made me a little, uh, quick little demo of just uh, every four seconds the server would go up and go down just to kind of test out um, the placement of the flag. Building it, <clears throat> Once you have your parts all secured, then you can just uh, assemble the case. The first thing you want to do is put the back cover onto the case. And then the bottom cover has sort of like a little railing system that kind of snaps in and just slides uh, and tucks into that, ba onto that back cover. And then the last piece you want to hook up is the front cover, which uh, is really simple. It has like this hinged door, which is really neat. So um, what you can do is you can uh, um, just pop it into place so this little door has a, a, a little hinge there. There's like this little dimple that comes out right there. There's a little dimple hole there. And there's one there as well. So there's the dimple. And then if you look at the inside of the hinge, there is a sort of a little nub that protrudes out there. You just want to line that up. Make sure it's in the right orientation. Just line that up right there. And then you can just kind of snap that in there. There's also a tiny little nub right here on the lip of this. There's a little nub right there, and that allows it to click into the top here. So you get that nice, real secure click, easy to pop it open again, um, but that's the way it works there. This one ha will require some force to, to take out, so um, you either want to use a spudger tool or your fingernails to pop that out, uh, but this one's really easy to pop out if you ever need to. So that's the way the hinge works there. Nice, nice that it doesn't require any hardware, as I did, I was going to use like a, a, a rivet type setup, but you don't need that when you got, uh, when you can print some pretty gnarly uh, geometry. Maybe not gnarly. I want to go ahead and mention that the guide was released 10 minutes ago. Looks like uh, Lamar or Brent Ooh. or Mike pushed Ooh. it out. Excellent. So you can check it out. Everybody check it out now. It's live. It's Somebody cool. was asking about why 32 instead, or why not a 32 instead of a... Um, that's a good, that's a good is question. Is code for both of those on there? I think I just skimmed the guide real quick. Yes, and noticed the code will work was. with any of the ESP8266s as they all kind of have this, they can all use the same libraries, okay. this is the same module. Uh, the Feather one though, I think just has certain GPIOs broken out. So read the docs um, to make sure. So we're getting there. Uh, after you put it all together, well, it's time to set up your Adafruit I.O. Adafruit I.O. setup is really easy. If you don't have an account, you can log in and set one up. It is free to do so. So you can set up and get a free account. 
Um, the base plan is uh, works out well for this project because you don't need uh, a whole bunch of uh, data or feeds. You just need one feed. You get up to five with your free account. So once you set that up, you want to create a new feed called Gmail. I'll give it a little description, and then uh, um, you will retrieve your Adafruit I/O key by going over to your profile. You can find it really quick. Just follow the little GIF here. Let's set up if this then that. If you don't have an account, set it up. You can use your Google account or your Facebook account to log in or create a new one. It's free as well. Um, you want to create a new applet. So if this then that. If Gmail, you want to search for the service Gmail. And then from Gmail, you can choose a number of different triggers. In this case, we're using the whenever we get anything in the email, in the inbox, uh, you know, fire off this, that's what the trigger is. You could also do different ones like if you get an email from a certain tag, if you get an email with only attachments, if you get an email from a specific person, those are all awesome triggers. Um, I'm just using the one that's general. It's like whenever I get any email, um, do my thing. Then you want to select the that. Uh, Adafruit is a uh, service that you can use, an actionable service that is uh, a part of if this then that. So the, the action you want to choose is the send data to Adafruit I.O. So whenever uh, you receive an email, you're going to send that data notification to Adafruit I.O. into your Gmail feed. The last thing you want to do is create um, your, uh, your fields, your action fields. So you want to make sure that uh, you want to review the applet and make sure that it works. Um, you, do, you do want to add an ingredient here where you select receive at from the drop down, but that's pretty straightforward as you follow this through. And then the last thing, you review and finish it, step six. It's like uh, whenever I get an email from this email, send the data to the Gmail feed. And that's pretty much it for the if this then that setup. Really simple. Now on to the Arduino setup. If you are new to Arduino, you haven't installed, you haven't uploaded any code to your ESP Huzzah yet, you will need a board profile and you will need the, the various libraries to get this thing going. The first one you want to do is, is install the Adafruit I.O. Arduino library, which uh, you can search for in the library manager. Just download it straight from there, or you can install it manually however you like. Um, now, when you install the Adafruit I.O. Arduino library, it comes with example codes. And one of the example codes is this very project, the if this then that, or in this case, Adafruit tutorial number 23. That's the one you want to pick. And that one has um, the kind of pre-made code for you to get working. The one thing you want to set up um, when you open your uh, the example code is you want to set up your Arduino network configuration. So that basically means you just want to put in your Adafruit I.O. username, your key, and then you want to is type in your Wi-Fi SSID and the password for your Wi-Fi. That way your board knows how to connect to your router and your Wi-Fi. If you have a phone, uh, and you want to configure that one, we have some notes here on how to do that. So if you want to do some Fona config, you can do that. Um, we also have Ethernet as well, if you want to do Ethernet. But for the Wi-Fi config, it's as simple as putting in your SSID and your password in the config uh, file. So there you go. And again, you can access your Adafruit I.O. key from your Adafruit I.O. profile. In the code section, we're just breaking out the actual code. This very top of the code talks about um, the servo setup, what pin is it hooked up, and the two positions. You want the flag up, and you want the flag down. In this case, you do want to flip the numbers. In my project, the flag uh, up is actually 170 degrees, something like that, and the down is actually like 40 degrees or something like that. It, they don't go to the full extremes just to not hit those limits, because you can totally hit every servo is different. They all have different pulse widths. So you want to mess with these numbers until you get something that works. And again, you want to um, kind of demo and test this out before you, uh, you know, finally secure your flag to the mailbox, because you don't want to have the flag to go all the way out when uh, you receive your email. Big old red highlight alert button over that section there. Bill was actually mentioning that we should put that in the guide there, like a nice little red strip yeah. saying to test out your rotation. You angle. definitely need to do that. Yeah. But you folks are smart, and I think you'll figure it out. <laughs> like, why is my servo flipping out? All right, so that's basically it. Uh, then we, uh, well, obviously, we, we break down more of the stuff. We break down the loop. Um, so we, we talk about the loop, how it runs, um, how to handle messages, um, and then testing out your box if you want to uh, set up the serial monitor or not. We also have some, uh, some 
uh, troubleshooting things, if some, some things don't work up, um, you can uh, check this out here. And there's some nice little um, answers here. And here's the full code there, which you can grab if you don't have the example file from the library. But that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, yeah, huge shout out to, uh, to Brent who put this together and uh, collaborated with us. He put this together a couple of months ago, I want to say, and we're finally releasing it as, it, uh, as all the stuff has come together. Very cool. So check it out. Um, it's on the Adafruit Learning System now. And um, I'll probably publish the files right now. Actually, give me a second to do so while I publish the Thingiverse files. Actually, I'll do it in the background here. Do we got any questions or anything? Yeah, Liz Myers is saying that the PDF link is jumbled up. I'm going to send this over to the, uh, the either Justin or Taylor. Yeah. Take a look at this. Cool. Because yeah, we'll get it sorted out. Thank yeah, you for showing us up on, the, on our end the exact same way. Oh, wait. Oh, nope. Yeah, the PDF jumbled up. <laughs> yeah. Well, a lot of folks love the PDF because then you can use those in an mm -hmm. educational setting where you yeah. need to distribute. Well, I will send this off. Where you can search and stuff as well. It's kind of like offline, access tutorial offline. All right, so it's been published in Thingiverse. If you guys want to check it out, um, Thingiverse is a great way to kind of get the word out. Yeah, so that was it. Or that. Yeah. Anybody want to send an email? Now's the time to do so. <laughs> So uh, coupon code IOT box. If you guys want to pick up the Huzzah or the micro servo, the sub micro servo, it's in stock right now. Um, or at least the sub micro servo is. The, uh, the Huzzah is in stock right now. I would definitely get the one with the loose headers because um, that fits in the case and it's easier to wire up into it as well. And uh, the sub micro servo is in stock as well. It's about six bucks. It's uh, a little bit thinner, a little bit smaller mm -hmm. than the, uh, the regular. Every millimeter counts. Every millimeter counts, <laughs> yep. Yeah, you also know that the mounting holes are in different spots, so you'd, you'll want to um, use those accordingly. Just running through some of the comments in the chat room, John Park is saying that we should make one for every bit, so we never have to change them out. Yeah, Brilliant definitely. Brilliant idea. Yeah, I started to for this one. I just need another one for the M3. Very cool. Let's see. Bunch of other stuff I should have wrote it down. It is printed in PLA. Um, how do you reset the flag? It just goes up and then goes down. Of course, yeah, you, can you can modify the movement. Yeah, you can tell how long you want it to stay up. And how, but for now, I think it's like two or three seconds. It stays up and then goes down. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Bill was mentioning he has a video on how to actually do the uh, what was it uh, tapping and die kit. So he has a video on that. You guys, check out. Oh, how to tap it. Mm -hmm. How to tap poles yep. properly? I've been doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Uh, what's the other stuff? Oh, tons of, there's lots of. Really I hate cool it when I'm tapping this thing and, I'm, and I look at it from the side and it's like at that angle. Oh, uh, Bill had a request for the demos, more for anybody who's writing the example codes for this. Uh, he wants the SSID and password for each board, uh, how to not hard code it. Oh, that's a good. So for security purposes, I just got an email from Brent. Hey, Brent. Quick update on the jumbled PDF. Looks like Justin is saying that Firefox is okay with it. Hmm. He just pushed out first. a uh, change for Chrome, so it'll render it without the content type. Oh, looks like this is an isolated. Looks like it's happening with a couple. So oh, okay. System Thank line. you for letting us System know. System failure, help us out. <laughs> no, just on a couple more. Oh, got another email. Yeah. Sweet. So it works. Yay. Andy There's Callaway is together. saying, shouldn't it stay up until the email is read? Oh, that's a good modification uh, for that. Don't know if that's a trigger, but maybe. Maybe you could write your own applet. That'd be kind of cool. There are tons and tons of uh, Ways triggers you modify, that you have. Yeah. If you haven't... Um, seen it, we have a really cool uh, Adafruit I.O. Uh, kind of introduction video that came out on YouTube. Did you guys see that yet? Just, just so happens the time 
Yeah, it works out really perfectly well. Perfectly with this project. It worked, yeah, it worked out really well. Also, Jim K is saying that he is a drummer as well, has a 10 piece pearl kit. Nice. Very cool. Yeah, here it is. Welcome to Afro IO. Uh, you already mentioned the filament that we're using on this. Right? I have not. Bill the, was saying that looks really nice. I nice love and this sparkly. filament. So, this is vertical, vertigo gray. Yeah, from from filamentum. filamentum. So, uh, filamentum. At, at stocking these, I'll show you what the galaxy black looks like. To put it overhead as we bleed into my section. Yeah, sure. And here's the difference on that. Yeah, it's like so these that gold speckles on it. Right. You really see it right there. Yeah. Yeah, it's fantastic material. It prints really nice, and it's also it a sort of a nice and smooth. Sort of yeah. your eco price is like thirty-five, maybe forty. Is it forty bucks? It's like thirty to forty bucks. Yeah, depending on depends. Where. So Amazon, um, <coughs> you can find on Amazon. You just go to the Filamentum website. They have a lot of great filament there. I think oh, we'll, I we'll stock it. One. Which one? This one? Yeah, I'm using on that. Vertigo spider. Starlight. That's what? what? They call it. Vertigo oh. Starlight. They have some fantastic photography as well. Really great, yeah. but yeah, they they are really specializing in like sparkly, beautiful filament. Yeah, not just the sparkly too. Like whatever the I don't know additives are adding. The spool winding is excellent as well. Yeah, spool winding the uh, it's like nice and like soft and like silk. Dude, this is like which I really needed for being able to run a chain over it. Yeah, very nice stuff. Anyway, that's the filament we used. We'll uh, try to stock some, but you can get some right now from. Uh, Various suppliers. Matter Hackers has some too. Yep, it's actually, I got some there. I got some from Amazon because yep. I needed a bunch of this to hurry up and complete. Hurry up and complete. This blade saw I've been working on. So if we bleed into one of my prototyping segment, Sorry, since we were absent last this. week, I haven't been able to show the progress on that. But if you're following me on Instagram, you've been able to see a lot of the work that I've been doing on that. And since I'm a little bit behind on posting, there's like a sneak peek of what I've got done so far. So I got the Cricut mounted in there. You can see it in there. The coolest thing about this is the dual extrusion with um, having the fusers built right in. So as you can see here, the uh, translucent PLA is printed right alongside with the black filament so you can get that nice diffusion of all the leds that are going to be inside of there makes it a lot more easier than having to ha have this cut out and then printing it separately having a way to snap fit it in or even glue it in like i did with the guardian sword which i actually had to print completely in translucent material and then put the uh, black to cover up where it didn't light up which works okay, but not for a sword that has, you know, such little diffusion, just the little, um, what's it called, the, the, the traces for all of the uh, lights that glow on there. So, back of that, there's going to be a bunch of greeblies that I've already printed out that will go all over it. An example of what that looks like. Actually, one of these here. Greeblies are details and sort of... Yeah, um, little odd bits. All that, like the uh, bumps that go all over there. So yeah. there's a bunch of they're them that, printed like, separately because you get way more. Yeah, um, I can't really. I don't have a quadruple extruder for right. And you get to things. print them faster because you can throw them on the different machines. Yeah, so I have a bunch of those that go on there. I uh, got the sound effects. We're trying to uh, see if we actually need it or not because when you actually turn it on, go to the other side, it's kind of loud. So yeah, got the slide switch down here. You got your USB port for programming over here. And the chain, all 3D printed. The links are all um, just filament that's been, uh, that's holding all these together. So they're like rivet filament pieces. Yeah, it's like rivets and stuff. So here we go. We've got ourselves a saw blade. It's super cool. Um, the track. Uh, just glides, glides along the edge of that and then turns the little wheel. Got some of the UV NeoPixels inside here, but they're not completely laid out how they should be. And then we're also going to be printing out the blades in the UV reactive uh, translucent filament. That way they have kind of edge light. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully you were able to hear me <laughs> from that. Yeah, I think so. 
So yeah, the um, about a millimeter thick for the uh, the blades, blade teeth on there that glide around, glide along the edge of that. Got the 10 by 15 by five millimeter bearings that are acting as the sliders for the standoffs that are holding both ends together. Mm -hmm. And what else can I say about it? Yeah, Cricut powered. So it's using yeah, the Adafruit Cricut along with the Circuit Playground Express on there. Um, two animations and all that. Yeah, what new strip are you using? The UV. UV. Uh, new yeah. pixel strips. So uh, if you guys have been following, we're big fans of the UV stuff just because it is uh, reactive with filament. Can't really see it on camera there. Yeah, it blows out cameras, but it's great. In real life. good there. And see how good it looks like in real life. Hopefully, we'll be yeah, able to capture that when we're filming. UV flashlight. We got yeah, it's got a UV flash in here. Yep. Mm -hmm. see what that looks like. Neat. Yeah, this is all put together in Fusion 360. Fusion 360. Yep. And yeah, we'll release this in about like two weeks like from now. Two, three weeks. Yeah. Uh, the handles will be printed out. Um, had like covers for the, uh, the dowels. I think mm. it's like a 716. That no, says right here. Yeah, this is a P uh, TPU flexible. Mm -hmm. They printed on the ultimate yeah, yeah. so flexible filament yeah. for that. I have the built-in uh, like stitches. Um, this is like the test one because I had to yeah, get yeah. the fittings right. Yeah, you can always that. cut your filament. Yeah, that's a good thing about <laughs> cool that. About the you cut it and be like, oh, okay, let me look on the inside, see how uh, far off I was. Yeah, that slips on right there. It goes over the top oh, part I'm of the handle. Uh, that was printed on the Flash Forge Adventure 2. It was released Yeah, today. yeah. Yeah, so this is all the uh, 85A, or 95A, wait, no, 85? No, that was regular. 95. Filament. Yeah, whatever the regular Ninja Flex is. The, 75? The elastic type, yeah, yeah the very flexible kind. And then here's the end, or the, is it the pommel? Yeah, yeah what it's called. Go pommel. on the end there. Again, did that nice uh, dual extrusion trip yeah, with sweet. the translucent stuff in there. Looks out great. Uh, especially for little small details like this, where I've always wanted to have like a translucent light shooting through. Um, wasn't as easy to do that if I had to print it in two different uh, materials, but if it's just uh, printed one, you can kind of see the diffusion there. It looks really good. It's way better. The mouth yeah. looks like a little duck or something. It's like right. a duck. So we're duck. Again, we're using the uh, vertical gray for this, and then the galaxy uh, vertical black. That. Yep. Very cool. Lots of stuff, and, but we'll go over all that oh, in yeah, like totally. two, three weeks. Two, three weeks. Super this close. Is the first super close. Yeah. Uh, cricket cosplay. The most major so. thing was getting the teeth actually turned. So yeah, that was tough. Yeah, you got that accomplished. There you go. Got it in frame. Woo. We're using the TT uh, motor, the uh, one to ninety gear ratio for that, uh, just so I could pull all those. Yeah, metal gears. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very cool. So that's what I'm working on, and then I think Excellent. the 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 project before that one, sort of to hold us over, uh, Lamar had an idea of making a, to, taking an existing marble run and just motorizing it. So this is a very popular uh, mor uh, marble run designed by, what is it, Tulio? Okay. Uh, was featured on Thingiverse. Everybody printed this guy out. Do so. you want the page open or just skip it? Uh, we can do it when we release the project. Okay. But yeah, this is, all I did was design the base for this. So houses the Cricut, the Cricut Playground Express on the inside. You have access to your USB if, if you want to reprogram that. Slide switch, um, it is battery powered, but you still have the option to plug this into the wall. And all it's doing really is just turning the worm gear here. So all of the marbles run through the run. Yep. Very the noisy country. show now that we, all of our projects have motors in them, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you still have the ability to hand turn this if you'd like. But um, obviously, having the motor run, yeah, gonna be a lot more soothing, I guess, with this loud yeah. motor. So <laughs> you get track. some lighting effects at the bottom as well, since yes. the circuit playground is mounted right above. Right underneath, yeah. Um, yeah, we're gonna. This we're, pops open. Yeah. Easily. So use the UV uh, blue, translucent yeah. blue for this, just so we can do the uh, the UV LED strip on the inside. Didn't mount that yet, but that should give it a nice little glow like that. Yeah. Sorry, wrong side. <laughs> there you go. It's also like Elsa's castle from Frozen. That's what we kept thinking, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very neat little project. 
Um, just, yeah, again, the, the concept is get a, motorize your marble runs, basically. Mm -hmm. That's the concept. Pretty cool. All right, so that's what we're working on. Let's jump into uh, Lair by Lair. Really, I just want to take this opportunity to show you guys this week's new CAD stuff that we have on the uh, Adafruit GitHub repo. Let's go ahead and jump through them. Yeah, we got some new parts. Let's see what's on the, on the thing this week. So this week we have a new part, a new board. If I can find it. <laughs> Here's the new board. It's a hollow wing. This is the hollow wing. Yay. So this is a, a nice 3D representation of the board. So we have the display here with uh, all the right fittings and kind of viewing area. Uh, we also have all the various JST connectors. Boy, does this board have a bunch of them. You have <laughs> uh, JST connectors for just about all of the sensors, NeoPixel um, and battery over here, uh, reset button over there. We have a NeoPixel that's on board, accelerometer somewhere up here, I believe. We also have an IR sensor, which is right over here on this corner, right there. Actually, that's a little IR sensor right there. Uh, the headers are there as well, or rather they're in the assembly. Um, and then you have an on-off switch, which is right here. So that is uh, a board that we, you, that we took out of Eagle using the new Fusion Sync functionality in the new versions of Autodesk Eagle and Fusion 360. You can uh, cr quickly create uh, 3D models of, uh, of, your, of your Eagle CAD designs as long as you have uh, some of the components uh, modeled already. In our case, we needed to have the micro USB, the JSTs, uh, the buttons, and the NeoP, all those different little components were modeled separately and then brought into this assembly, uh, which made it a little bit faster than having to do it the old way, which is to recreate the board outline and mounting holes all within Fusion. So now I don't have to do that, which is really great. Uh, so you guys can pick this up. It'll be in the GitHub repo shortly after the show, because I got to publish it. Some other things that we do have that are already published. Earlier this week, we published the micro servo. This guy has two mounting tabs. They're the M2 size. It has a 22-point spline, um, which is important if you're going to kind of machine your own uh, servo horn, for example. The wiring is right here on the side in the right proper places. Um, so this model is a pretty accurate representation of the, of the real one as I used it in this week's project. Let's take a look at some other things. We've got a battery holder. This is the uh, three AA battery holder that we have in the shop. PID, uh, well, I forget what the PID is. For what? what? Uh, for this battery. Oh. Uh, two mounting holding. holes, that's about it. There's not much to it. I got the positive and negative signs on there for uh, polarity. Um, but I, and there's the cable it should be routed out here, which I didn't model the cable, but you'd have a, an idea of where the cable needs to come out. And this was uh, used in the Lego battery project that happened last week. Got some other parts for you. This is a micro USB panel mount, PID 3258. This one has two mounting holes. It includes the screws, the actual one, the physical one. The model does not include the screws. Uh, but there's two mounting holes here. The distances work out. I use this in my uh, DIY agitator project that I'm working on. And it's really important to have this modeled so that I can see if I have any uh, clashing or intersecting faces in the design. Uh, so this is a nice uh, little model of the uh, USB panel mount whenever you need to break out your, your, uh, your programming port and your enclosure, this is a great way to do so. I got another component for you. This is a 2.1 millimeter DC barrel jack panel mount. So if you want to break out your uh, female uh, 2.1 millimeter uh, DC barrel jacks, uh, you, can, you can break this out. Um, the wiring connectors are in the back here. There's a little PCB um, that the, uh, the, actual uh, the actual plastic housing is secured to. Um, and then you have this little uh, hex nut, maybe it's a hex nut, that, uh, that's used for uh, securing it, panel mounting it. So you can see that you got a nice little distance between these two faces. And that's where uh, you want to have this thing mounted. It flanges out a bit so that you can't push it into the enclosure. So that's why it's designed that way. Uh, but uh, using it in the DIY agitator project as well as I need to break out uh, this little battery adapter thing. Or battery, no, it's not a battery. It's a, uh, jack and the power jack. Speaking of power jack, we needed to model the power jack. So we <laughs> modeled the power jack. 
This is the right angled power jack. We do not carry these in the store. Maybe we will. Uh, but I got the I got a, we got like a hundred of them or something from Amazon, mm -hmm. uh, and these just sh show uh, that you really do get a really since it is right angled, you don't have this super long uh, plug that has to yeah. be embedded yeah. inside your enclosure. Uh, so that's why I modeled this guy so I can see representation of it, and uh, it works out pretty well. I don't have the whole cable model, but just having some of it there gives you an idea of, of how yeah, much you can extrude you need from to. that. You can extrude from that as well. Those are all of the parts that are now in the GitHub repo. You can check those out, download them, step file, STL files, whatever. They're all in the GitHub page, which is right over here, I believe. You should just type in GitHub uh, CAD parts. That is the link. Those are all the parts. And uh, again, I'll push out the, uh, the, uh, the Halloween shortly. After this show, excellent. Yeah, we've been busy. <laughs> um, great we sense. have not slept that much. We haven't slept in five days. <laughs> That's actually why you got sick. That's I why think. I got sick. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was going to get sick this morning, but then I just, just ran it off. Let's go outside run, and mm -hmm. I feel good now. All right. Let's, let's run through this uh, agitator real quick. You want to run through it? What time is it? It's, uh, uh, we got about 10 minutes. We're going to talk about for five very, minutes. Very, very quick. This is next week's project. Yes. It is a little utilitary tool to allow us to make much better PVA prints. So let's take a look at a PVA print. PVA prints, we took a look at them a couple months ago. We were talking about dual extruding uh, PLA with, uh, with PVA, which is a water-soluble filament. So I printed out this crazy gnarly shape. This is a Hilbert cube, which is the cube that kind of creates all these crazy geometries. And this white stuff is PVA filament extruded, and it's used as a support material. So what you can do with this stuff is you literally just drop this in a uh, container full of water and watch it dissolve the PVA. So this is what it looks like as a time lapse with a regular PVA print with no agitation. This takes hours. We were uh, used to just letting it sit overnight, so several hours, maybe eight hours of just sitting in this thing. And the bad thing about this, and not only does it take a long time, is that it's actually a little bit of a cleanup. So when you take your part out, you have all this PVA residue and goop that's all kind of stuck to the bottom of your container. So um, Lamar had a great idea, so why not make a PVA agitator um, using Cricut? So this is a 3D printed case with the Cricut uh, and a TT motor. And we created a little, uh, kind of a little wobbling mechanism that sits on top of the case and just uh, rotates back and forth, or, or rather, uh, yeah, rotates, <laughs> and oscillates, and it creates this cool kind of cylindrical motion so that you can uh, basically cut the time in like a quarter. So uh, you can basically get this agitated within an hour or two as opposed to eight hours. So it's really actually useful. Um, Very useful. Yeah, so uh, I got a little plug here. I'll, I'll turn it on and we'll kind of see it working here. So I got my DC barrel jack in the back there because I had to break that out. I also had to break out the USB for programming right there. Cricket is inside here. The Cricket's in there with the TT motor and a lot of ventilation holes and stuff. Snap fit together case. Um, works out really well. So this uh, is a pot with an on off switch knob so I can turn it on. Turn up the um, Turn up the power, turn up the what? So this is uh, pretty slow. You can get it down pretty slow. And normally what these are for, for like mixing chemicals and stuff, but for as an agitator, this is really what we're gonna be using it for. So you can get pretty quick, pretty fast. 200 RPMs right there at full power. Um, this is running circuit Python, but we could also do this in make code. Where you can uh, map the, uh, the values from the potentiometer to uh, and map it to the uh, to the speed of the motor. So this works really, really great. It's not that loud. Let's see if I can do an overhead shot. I'll just kind of show you the the motion that it's creating there. So that's the motion it's creating. It is it is enough to really get that thing agitated and shaking up uh, to the point where it will almost like kind of fall off of the thing because it's going so fast. Um, so I had to kind of make this nice little base here. So last thing I'll show you is uh, the way the parts fit together. This is just a container. This little piece here is kind of the base. So you have this uh, attachment here that you can kind of remove and put a new one on. On the bottom here, you can see we have uh, those 
Uh, really nice uh, ball bearings, the uh, 15 by 10 by 4 millimeter ball bearings. Really nice, they go, the three of them get uh, fitted on that platform, so this is like a three-part assembly. And then this is the platform that kind of houses uh, the pivot points. So these, you have these little pieces here that uh, allow uh, uh, the ball bearing to fit on this end and on the bottom end. And then this bracket here uh, kind of keeps those elevated and separated. So the motor, the shaft of the motor is actually right there. And this gets plugged in like that so that when you turn it on, this rotates. And then when you have the platform on top, it'll just go with this because uh, these are kind of like the slaves and these are the masters there and they're just kind of going along with it. So that's how that works out. Cliffhanger right here, boom. Yeah. And we'll show that off next week. <laughs> yeah, it's done. That was yeah, all I wanted to show. Yeah, so with those 10 minutes remaining, let's go ahead and walk through uh, this oh. week's uh, Community Makes. Oh, yeah. Let's go over the one for last week and this week. Last week, nice little test of using the 0.25 millimeter nozzles to get some excellent detail quality out of this very highly detailed little San Francisco cable cart. So if you take a look at the wheels on this, this came out excellent. Um, more surprising is the little tiny handles that did not turn into a goop. There's all this little like break, I guess. Usually you get with like a 0.4 millimeter nozzle or anything bigger, you get this blob of focusing there. Tend to get like just a blob. Um, you can actually see some detail in there. <laughs> wow. Amazing. All the seats, all of the, uh, what's it called? The lettering on there. Yeah, yeah. So excellent, excellent model. Yeah. How did you print it? Uh, just 0.25 millimeter nozzle. nozzle? Yeah. yeah. So the nozzle is, is half the diameter of your regular 0.4 mm -hmm. nozzles. And I think we're using the Galaxy Black for this right yep. here. Galaxy Black. Uh, this is the filament. This is all filament. No, except for the pink. The pink is glitter. Pink. Uh, metallic glitter from Protopasta. Yeah. But yeah, we're really liking the glitter filaments. Yeah. Uh, excellent print. Um, usually some of the train models on Thingiverse are like tiny little, you know, squares and circles everywhere for each individual part. This one just snap fits together. You can actually pull this apart. Yeah. Oh, it's just a tack it's that's right. on there. Yeah. So all that just comes off. Super yeah. easy. Only the little tiny part was this little bell that snaps into the top right there. Excellent little design there. Yep. The uh, links for that will be in the uh, video. Yep. And so then this week's project, or this week's Time Lapse Tuesday, another really good one by Sonia Verdu. Mm -hmm. sure. uh, this baby dragon whistle. Actually works. That actually works. 100 microns, excellent detail. I think she sculpted it in ZBrush maybe? ZBrush? Or Blender? No, I think ZBrush. But yeah, yeah, very excellent. And here's what it sounds like. If you put water on the inside too, it does, uh, I don't know what it's called, but. There you go. Super, super fun, functional print. Yeah, printed in uh, green, Lulz green from Proto Pasta. Yeah. Excellent uh, quality Excellent there, detail. and it's got that sparkle as well. If you go to the overhead, you can kind of see what the sparkles look like. Yeah, and not not too much. So much crazy, but great, enough to actually blend the layer lines. Yeah. So that's really good. Not the prettiest green, but not the ugliest. Mm -hmm. Super cool. I get to check <laughs> out all of Time Lapse Tuesday projects, and if you want to submit one of your designs for Time Lapse Tuesday, just add us on Discord. Twitter or anywhere else. You said it. Excellent. Well, there's some other things that we get to cover um, real quick. Um, I was going to cover probably web USB. Just a shout out. Uh, yes. If you're using make code, check out make codes uh, learning guide. We published a, uh, a little page on how to use, how to use the beta version. It lets you do web USB. So you have this sort of one click deploy upload. Uh, to your Circuit Playground Express, your Microbit, whatever compatible make code PXT device you have. Uh, so we put together this page, we released it a couple weeks ago, and I don't remember if I talked about it last week, probably didn't because we didn't do a show last week. So it just kind of shows you how to um, get the beta, how to install it, how to start using it. Mm -hmm. It's a life changer. So there you go. Back over to the community makes, we'll probably take a look at these last bits. Oh man, I want to do the mic, can we do the servo real quick? The, the micro motor? You got like Five minutes, I Okay, think. let's see if we can do this in five minutes. Uh, I got some motors from Pyramony. These, These are the motors. Are These are so awesome, awesome motors. These are really, really small, tiny motors. 
Look at how tiny Yeah, so these are the tiny motors. They come in different I gear ratios. The cool thing I like about this is that the gears are actually already embedded in the actual motor itself. Uh, they're machined out of metal, so they are metal. Uh, you have two mounting holes here. You have this nice brass plate that you can take apart, and they design their own custom PCB shim that uh, is already soldered to the terminals on the battery, so you don't have to worry about your wires breaking out. And then you have two uh, standard pin header pins that are right here that you can wire into directly or hook up uh, to these kind of male uh, or female uh, jumper cables. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug this into the circuit playground, uh, or really the cricket, the cricket board. I got my cricket set up with my 3D printed case and our battery holder. I really like using these extension um, so I can plug in all sorts of different motors and just swap them out. What we're going to look at is the, uh, the motor kind of moving and how quiet it is and that sort of thing. So it's a really, really small motor. It'll fit in very tight spa uh, spaces. And what I'll do is um, I, I got their Maker Essentials kit, which comes with two motors, uh, a couple of these like little adapter purple pieces for Lego uh, axles, kind of like the ones we sell for the TT motors has a, a special key that locks in there. And then this is the axle that can connect to your Lego thing here. So now what I can do is I can turn this on and get a good look at how quick uh, we can get this thing moving. So this That's is awesome. their slow uh, kind of gear ratio. I think it's one to 50 reduction or something. You can check a look at their website, but um, you can turn this up, slow it down. This is just a really great way to add kind of movement to your Lego scenes. So you wanted something moving. That's so awesome. Yeah, it's very, with very the size, smooth. Since you're actually able to print some bricks that I can hide inside of. Exactly. So you can hide this and you store this in a brick itself. Mm -hmm. Very little movement. You do have a little bit yeah, of a nub there. But this works out six. really well. Now I would show the other motor, but the other motor is just faster. And that's it. Pyromoni goes did a fantastic job on manufacturing their own kind of mounting mechanism. You see the Pyromoni logo there. And that is meant to kind of just fit in over here. And then you can uh, stick this to whatever, you can mount this to whatever. So I think for wheels, they have wheels as well that come mm -hmm. with the kit. Lots of great uh, motors uh, from the Pyromoni folks. So um, I would love to stock these if we could. So there they are. Let's go to the website real quick and just look at it one last minute. It's called the Maker Essentials um, Pack. It comes with the grippy wheels, two motors, and your little hub adapters. And they just have fantastic, um, fantastic, uh, box design packaging. Uh, and then they have different motors. So they have uh, five different ones. Uh, different the gear reductions are, are listed here. I have the really fast one and the 50, I think. But they all have different things. They also have the, the, the sh motor shims sold separately if you want to buy them separately or if you want to buy the motor with the shim. You have a lot of options. There's the shim itself. Very, very clever um, products from Pyromony. So shoot, shout out to Pyromony. And uh, that's uh, my little demo here for that. So check it out, Parmoni. No, no coupon code for you, sorry. <laughs> Maybe me and Parmoni will have one. Speaking of coupon code, if you want to pick up some motors that we have in the store, you just give a code IOT box. Yeah, you gets you 10% off your Adafruit order, except subscriptions and Adaboxes. Yeah. Some Wait, more no, subscriptions. There were some more community makes, but we're going to have to skip them this week because it's uh, two minutes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you got A lot go. of stuff we're working on. There's way more in the yeah, backlog. There's more stuff. Uh, there's that we new can't stuff even we got to get, get on. There's like this this overflow of. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And again, if uh, we didn't get to say hi, you can say hi to us in the Discord chat room. We're checking out there. Mm -hmm. Looks like AT. Lots looks of like really Bill good discussion cool that is archived and saved in both YouTube chat and Discord. So definitely scroll through those. Yep, they're in the show and tell. Up. Great place. We'll show uh, real quickly just some kind of things that are happening. That was a really that cool. That was really one. cool. Yeah, the fuzzy really cool speaker. Brent's up in there as well. So check it out. Get it. Oh, it was a really cool one. Mm -hmm. Wearable stuff. I would suggest getting out of that yeah. unless you want to kill your entire. Look at this knob, dude. There's, there's so knob, much bro. stuff. <laughs> look at this. Look at this knob, man. I love. Look at this. It's so tinsy. Mm -hmm. uh, it's dope. <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining us this week. We'll be here next week unless one of us gets sick. Pedro, looking at you. Nope, I'm still good. You're still good. Cool. You want to get some cha cha? Yeah, let's go get some food, mm -hmm. some ramen. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. Don't forget, we got a show and tell tonight. We will be there. Yep. Some other folks too. Mm -hmm. And then stay tuned for 8 o'clock's Big Show, Ask an Engineer with Lamar and Phil going over all the awesome nuts going on in Adafruit. 
lots of sneak peek stuff. And of course, all the new products that come out every week. Got some really cool ones that we got to see put up on the site. Yeah. So definitely stay tuned for those. Tomorrow is John Park's workshop. Thursdays yes. at 4 p.m. We got a new John Park sticker over there. I was going to say, where did it? I put it over there. No, I got another one you over know? here. I just want to show it off over the air, overhead. Yeah, this sticker was designed by Bruce. Yeah, Bruce, right? yeah. Bruce, our creative director. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe John can give these away as prizes yeah, for really something. Yeah, really cool John Park workshop Check sticker. that out. Yeah. I would put this on something, but I want to save it. I already did. I put it over there. Oh, well, good thing we got to our Octoprint sticker. I will sticker. save this one. <laughs> anyway, tune in to John tomorrow, mm -hmm. 4 p.m. Thank mm -hmm. you guys so much for supporting Adafruit. Every one of your orders goes and supports every one of the folks that work at Adafruit mm -hmm. real hard. Yes, yeah. there is so a really lot it. of gears to turn this clock. Yeah, it's really loud, isn't it? Very loud. Yes. Well, thank you guys again. Don't forget coupon code IOT box, and we'll have another one tonight. Well, how about an enable pin, John? <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you guys again, and uh, don't forget to make a great day. We're going to leave you with last week's fail, I think. This, week. this week's fails, yeah. Maybe this week. <laughs> Have a great one, guys. Bye.